Hi there. Welcome to our second tutorial about how to create a WordPress plugin. Now in this tutorial we're going to build on the plugin from the first video and we're going to introduce a few more concepts such as using forms to submit data from your plugins administration page and how to store your plugin data in the WP options database table for easy retrieval. So let's get started. Now in the previous video our plugin queried the WordPress database immediately upon clicking the plugin administration page link in the set which was in the settings menu. So we'll just do that again just to refresh our memories. So we go to the settings menu and select our plugin which was called my first plugin. So as you can see we, um, we've queried the database and displayed all the posts which are in draft mode. Now this isn't the most desirable behavior because the plugin is currently sending a query to the database every time we go to our plugins administration page. Now this might be okay for a simple query which doesn't take too long to complete but ideally we should minimize the amount of database queries that we do. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a search button to the administration page and we'll ask the user to click the button if they want to display the data. So this way we don't automatically query the database and every, every time we land on our plugins administration page. So now we're back at our coding editor and we have our original code from the first video. Let's now add some button code to our administration page so that when someone goes to the plugin page they'll see a search button at the top of the page which will make it possible to query the database for the draft posts and then display them. Okay, so now we've added some HTML code and first up we've entered a heading explaining what the plugin does and also some text asking the user to click the button if they wish to start the search. Now you can also see here that we've added a HTML form which will represent the button. We've left the action parameter blank because we aren't sending data to another page and our method parameter is set to post which will enable us to check if somebody has clicked the button. Now looking at our input tag um, we have a type equal to submit. Now this value is what defines our button as a submit button which in our case will be a search button which will execute the query to the database. Now for the button name parameter we've entered the following string which is called search draft posts you can make, whatever, make up whatever name you wish but just keep in mind that we will use this later for checking the post super global variable to check if our button was clicked. For the value parameter we've entered the value of search. This is actually the string which will be displayed in the button when uh, as it appears to the user on the page. And finally we have a class parameter and we've set this to the value of button dash primary now this is a special WordPress class and this will actually style our button to match the general WordPress user interface. Okay, so let's save our code and let's take a look at the effect that our changes have had on our plugin. So we're now back at our plugins administration page after having FTP'd our latest changes um, from our computer over to our WordPress host. So after refreshing the page we can see that our new button is being displayed along with the text just above it but currently the button doesn't do anything because we haven't programmed it to do anything. Now I've also added another test draft post in addition to the first three that you can see displayed here. So just to demonstrate that the button doesn't actually do anything, I'll click on it and we can't see any extra draft posts being displayed because we're not asking the database to do the query after clicking the button. So let's now go back to our coding editor. So now we need to add some code which will check whether our button has been clicked or not. And if it has been clicked, then we'll do our database query and then display the results in our table accordingly. So let's add this code now.
So we've now added an if statement which is encasing the original code which was performing the database query and also the for each loop which displayed the results. Note that inside the if statement we have an isSet function which checks the post super global variable whether we clicked our button which as you might remember previously uh, had the name variable set to search draft posts. Now from this if statement, if the button was actually clicked, the isSet function will actually return true, which means that the code with inside, inside the if statements brackets will be executed. So let's save this file and FTP these latest changes to our WordPress host. So now we're back at our plugins administration page after FTPing our latest changes over to our WordPress host. Let's click on the button. And now if we look at our results in the table, we see that we have another post, another draft post called test draft 4, and it appears that our button is working as expected. But there's one problem. If I navigate away from this page, as I'll do now, I'll just click on the dashboard link, and then I'll go back to our plugins page by selecting my first plugin from the settings menu. Now you'll see that once we go back to our administration page for our plugin that our table is now showing as blank. Now why is this? This is because we've now added an if statement which is encasing the code which is querying the database and this if statement requires that we click the button in order for us to display the results in the table. Now this is definitely not ideal behavior for our plugin because we don't want to repeatedly perform database queries for searches which we performed earlier. It would be nice if we could make our plugin smart enough to remember previous searches and then we can easily bring up that data without having to perform a heavy duty database search. So the best way to solve our problem is to store our data into a table called WP underscore options which is a core WordPress table and which will allow us to store our data for easy retrieval later. So let's learn now how to do this back in our code editor. So now what we need to do is add some code to our plugin which will allow us to be able to store our data into the WordPress WP underscore options table and then we should be able to easily retrieve that data whenever we need it. So let's add that code now. So now we've added a few more lines of code and we've also changed the extent of our if statement block. Now first up you'll see here a line which contains the WordPress function called update underscore option. Now to give you a brief explanation of this function, the update underscore option function will check the WordPress options table if the option already exists before updating its value. Otherwise this function will actually create the new option for us if it's needed. This update underscore option function takes two arguments, the first of which is our option name. It's very crucial that you name that the name is unique, which is why it's always a good idea to prefix the name with something original. The second argument is the value which will be stored in our WP options table under our option name. So the value stored in our case will be the contents which are inside the my test drafts variable, which is an array. Regarding our if statement block, we're now only encasing the database query. Uh, portion of our code and the line with our update underscore option function. So this therefore takes us to the next few lines of code which is the else if statement. Now here we're using another WordPress function similar to the update underscore option function earlier. The get underscore option function will retrieve our options from the WP options table but it will return false if our option does not exist. So in this case if our option does exist we will return an array of contents and then store them in our my test drafts variable. You'll also notice that near the top we've also initialized our my test drafts variable to a blank array which will ensure that we won't get an error in the for loop if we don't meet the conditions in the if statements below. So we've now finished our coding. Let's see our plugin's new functionality in action.
After FTPing our latest changes to our WordPress host, we're now back at our plugins administration page. Now you might recall earlier that whenever we navigated away from our plugins administration page and then came back to the same page, we lost our data which was displayed in the table. So let's try the same thing now to see the new behavior. So we'll navigate away and we'll go to the dashboard. And now we'll go back to our plugins admin page. So coming back to our plugins administration page, you'll see that our table is displaying our posts as it should. So this completes our second video on how to create a WordPress plugin. I hope that you found it enjoyable and I'll speak to you next time. Bye for now.